one preseason game left, Dolphins fans. That's Saturday evening in Jacksonville against the Jaguars, and then we can start turning our attention to that initial 53-man roster, to some schedule predictions, to the Los Angeles Chargers Week 1 preview. But as we've been doing four of these preseason preview videos, as you as you know if you've been around, I've been singling out like three players that I've just kind of had tabs on, extra eye on in that game. Well, I'm going to cheat this week because I just talked about that initial 53-man roster. That needs to be determined by 4 p.m. on Tuesday of next week. So I'm actually going to single out three positions that I'm going to have the extra eye on, keeping the tabs of this week for a couple of different reasons. One, just because of those 53, 53 roster spots in general, but one of the positions we're going to talk about today, there is a starting spot available on this Miami Dolphins roster. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I get into my, my players, my positions, Got to hear from you as well. If there's another position out there that you're keeping your eye on, players you're keeping your eye on Saturday in Jacksonville, go ahead, drop them in the comments. And one last thing before I get started at the end of the video, I am recording this on Friday evening. It's going to be released Saturday morning, but I want to give the latest news, the latest updates I've received on the Jonathan Taylor situation as well. So I will touch on that in the end. But I talked about a position that not only are we talking about roster spots when it comes to that initial 53, but that starting gig that's up for grabs. And of this list of the guys that are kind of considered to be able to play left guard, it's between Isaiah Wynn and Liam Eikenberg for my money. And it was always Liam Eikenberg's job. And then lack of production, lack of performance, this nagging injury that's kind of held him out the last week or so really opened the door. And Isaiah Wynn's the one that's been able to answer the bell and look pretty decent in some of the preseason action and do the same in the training camp action. And Robert Jones was part of that as well. And unfortunately, we know the injury, the injury bug bit him. So he's going to be a few weeks. So I still expect him to, to make the roster. But when we're looking at that starting left guard spot, in my opinion, it's, it's Isaiah Wynn. And Liam Eikenberg's probably right there as well because the team really wants him to succeed. They want him to be that guy. It just might not turn out that way. And the thing I'm going to be curious to watch for all week, Mike McDaniel saying, you know what, Tua and the starters want to give them a, at least a, a series, a couple of series. No, nope, not going to play them an entire half, but I want to see who's that left guard that's running out there with the ones, with Tua, and how does that guy look? And then who's coming in afterwards, and how do they look as well? Left guard, I mean, I tell you what, it's it's the position you could argue is going to make this team go this year. We're already banged up with Teron Armstead at left tackle. We already got Austin Jackson, who's a little bit of a question mark the way it is at right tackle. Can't have all these question marks on the offensive line and left guard is the spot that's still probably up for grabs. So that has got my attention. The next position you're going to see is tight end. And the only tight end that's on the roster that's not on the list below you is Durham Smythe. And it's for the obvious reason. The coaching staff came out and said, you know, what? who's safe? Who's the guy that we're going to have? That's Durham Smythe. I mean, he's going to be used probably sporadically in the receiving game but we know what he's here for, the run blocking, the pass protection. He is the safe one. But who's safe outside of that? Who's the tight end two? Who's the tight end three? Who's guaranteed a spot on this roster? Can't tell you. I don't know if the Dolphins can tell you right now. And the interesting thing going into this game is if they haven't seen enough from the training camp practices or the first two preseason games, who knows what we'll see on Saturday in that third preseason game. Maybe someone does step up and just really take the reins there. But we talked about that 53-man roster and about how, yeah, we're going to have to cut down our roster coming on Tuesday. That's happening. Guess who else is, though? 31 other teams. So if the Dolphins don't like what they've seen, if they're not comfortable with what they're seeing, tight end might be a position we start poaching from another team of a guy that's cut. But a guy on this list that we're not going to see is Eric Soybert. And then we've got the two former wide receivers, tight end, converted position players, Elijah Higgins, Tanner Connor. Tanner Connor being new to practice basically this week after being um, lifted off of the PUP list. He's got limited action. He's probably going to get a, a decent sized workload on Saturday. I'm at least assuming at this point in time. So can, can him or can Elijah Higgins build on some of the successes he has? Julian Hill, who I, in all honesty, thought he came into camp as a body. I thought he was a training camp body. And guess what? He's had some flashes. 
He's made some marks in the receiving game in these training camp practices. He's been noted for some nice blocks as well. It is officially wide open. So I want to see on Saturday, can someone step up when their number is called and really say, you know what, I looked the part. Maybe I'm not just tight end two, but you're going to rely on me and you're going to make me part of this 53-man roster. Let's go on to the last position I have, which is a linebacker. The guys on this list, so you look at linebacker in the middle, especially it's Jerome Baker, it's David Long, and then behind those guys is likely Duke Riley. He's kind of solidified. And then you got Andrew Van Ginkle, who's been in that, that middle linebacker role, but has also been out on the edge with the on-ball linebacker as well. So it's the top three names that I really want to really wanna hit on and say, you know what, these are the guys that are battling for that next spot in line or for roster spots in general. Because if you look at A.J. Johnson, kind of similar to Tanner Connor in a sense, obviously he hasn't been here but just signed this week. And yeah, he's familiar with Fangio and the, the defense and the scheme and everything. And I would assume I haven't heard one way or another. I'm assume he'll get some run in Saturday's game. We'll have to wait and see. But man, he's been plagued by injuries a little bit recently. But outside of that, last healthy season, he actually did all right. So we can't rule him out. Aubrey Miller, a guy that we're all cheering for, we want to see. This is his opportunity. Go out and flash, stick somebody, get those big hits, show you, you know what, I, I belong on the 53, and if not on the 53, damn it, I belong on that practice squad. And then Channing Tindall as well. I actually really liked what I saw to him in the first preseason game. We didn't see quite as much in the second preseason game, although he had a couple of nice reps as well. But you know what, heading into training camp, he wasn't guaranteed a roster spot. Now, I think he's fairly safe right now, but at the end of the day, show it. Just prove it. Just solidify, you know what, I was a third-round pick last year. I'm going to be kept, not only just because of my draft stock, but because I belong. And if you need me, whether it's a spying role or a coverage role, whatever you need me for, Fangio, I'm here. I can do it. I've got the mental capacity to be on the field and not let you down when I'm out there. Big night ahead for our linebackers. So those are the positions I have. But like all right, so let's talk about Jonathan Taylor a little bit as well. Because like I said, I'm recording this on Friday. We'll see if this news is still relevant as you're watching this today. But I think we all know by now about the Indianapolis Colts and them declining an offer from the Dolphins. And that offer, I think it was a Barry Jackson report where he said it was an offer that is deemed kind of fair in his opinion. I am not um, able to share with you what that offer is. I do know it, and I would say that Fair is uh, is not quite the word I would use. I honestly think Jonathan Taylor is worth a little bit more than what that offer was. However, things do remain fluid between the Dolphins and the Colts and uh, the players that could be considered in that trade and any picks that could be considered in that trade. And, and like I said, I'm not really at liberty to be able to give any specifics. I knew I do know that the Dolphins have another uh, offer out to the Indianapolis Colts right now as well. Um, like I said, I can't give out the the exact details as the player and as like which round the pick would be in, but it is currently a Dolphins player. And then there's at least one draft pick that could that can go up around depending on on playing time performance metrics and all of that that may poten potentially be hit. So that draft pick, um, kind of like what we saw in the in the Aaron Rodgers deal, um, based on a couple of different factors, could be elevated up a round based on a couple of things. But like I said, things are remaining fluid between the two. Um, the Colts have kind of shown that you know what we don't really want to budge on our first round asking price. And what have we seen from the Dolphins so far throughout? the off season and their pursuit of running backs is we had a cap, what we were going to spend on a guy like Dalvin cook and, and give up and, or once he was released, spend on him. We they're not budging either. So this is going to kind of be a ballot battle to see who blinks. Does a team blink? So like I said, things remain fluid. I do know that Jonathan Taylor's top choice is the Miami dolphins. I'm pretty confident. That's all public knowledge at this point in time. I have been told that Jonathan Taylor for the Dolphins would be willing to take a little bit of like a team friendly contract extension. But with that, Jonathan Taylor knows he's a top running back in this league. He's 24 years old. He's doing this because he wants to get paid. So while it would be a little bit of a team friendly contract extension, it's still money that's going to be spent at the running back position that most teams really don't do and or are willing to do. Um, and that we're seeing because of the, the market for these guys. 
But that is what I've got the latest on Taylor. Like I said, we'll see if that's uh, still relevant as of Saturday morning. But that's what I've got, and that's what I at least wanted to tag to this video as well. So we'll see what happens with Jonathan Taylor. We'll see what happens with the Dolphins in Jacksonville with that game against the Jaguars. And we will be back wrapping up that uh, wrapping up that game. If any Jonathan Taylor news breaks in the meantime, we'll be back with that as well. But that is what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.